the Bulls finish up non-conference action and dive into Big East play and a look at freshman Solomon Bozeman. All that coming up on the Robert McCollum Show. As the calendar rolls over to 2007, we wish everyone out there a very happy new year on this another edition of the Robert McCollum Show. I'm Jim Lighthall along with the coach and we are bridging the gap on this week's game. The gap between the end of the non-conference schedule and the beginning of Big East play. Always an exciting time of the year as a lot of schools are done facing teams out of their league and they start going toe-to-toe -to -toe in a quest for a conference championship and obviously no exception for the USF Bulls. Coach, this is why you're in the Big East. You want to be in the best conference in America? Now is the time to start playing them. Well, it really is and it's been a short turnaround in terms of going from uh, non-conference play uh, to conference play. You like to have uh, a few more days to prepare, but uh, the situation uh, really we weren't afforded that opportunity this year, and so we were uh, in a situation where we went uh, against one of the uh, best programs, not only in the Big East, but in the country, uh, right out of the gates, and uh, didn't fare nearly as well as we uh, would like to have as we began the uh, 07 calendar year. We'll take a look at UConn coming up in just a few moments, but obviously in this league there are no off nights at all. That uh, could not be better put, and we know that all too well with uh, Pitt, uh, Louisville, and Cincinnati uh, all on the horizon within the next 10 days. Before we take a look at Big East play, the Bulls had some unfinished business against Bethune-Cookman on the eve of the new year. We'll take a look at those highlights when we come back. Interesting times in business today. We hear the word survival a lot. Well, we'll help you survive, but like us, wouldn't you rather succeed? Lights Insurance. We leave nothing to chance. Now, Tampa Bay's favorite newspaper makes it easier to be in the know. More colorful, streamlined pages get you quickly to your favorite news and features. And new Sunday sections about the box, the workplace, and travel, books, and the arts. It's everything you'd expect from one of America's ten best newspapers. Designed with you in mind. In the know, in the time. To subscribe, log on to TampaBay.com or call 1-877-THE-TIMES. Dodge Caliber's versatility and great gas mileage make it perfect for a road trip. All the right features make it even better. If there were a cornerstone defining the word character, and if that cornerstone was applied to us, we would hope integrity would distinguish us. Likes insurance. We leave nothing to chance. The Robert McCollum Show is presented by Canes and Save on Furniture and brought to you in part by CGM Services, Singular Wireless, Coca-Cola, Dodge, Kirby's Menswear, Likes Insurance, and by the St. Petersburg Times. And time again for the Singular Wireless Fan Question of the Week. And Coach, what do you attribute your team's balanced scoring attack to? That's from Chuck in Brandon. That's a great question on, uh, on uh, Chuck's behalf, and I think balance is something that uh, all coaches want, regardless of, the, of the, in any team sport. And uh, it does a number of things. One, it says that players recognize uh, their roles, that uh, the more scoring that you have, uh, the, you have more 
guy's going to be happy, and it's, it prevents your opponents from focusing, being able to key on one or two guys. And uh, four or five guys in double figure scoring is something we've always desired, and we know uh, for us to have the ch chance to be the best team we can be, we need to have that consistently, four or five guys in double figures. Well, you certainly got that against Bethune-Cookman. They were the final non-conference team to face the Bulls this season. Those two teams hooked up at the Sun Dome on the final day of the 2006 year. Well, Coach, you got off to a quick start yet again. This time, Melvin Buckley got his stroke going early, and it seemed like you just swarmed Bethune-Cookman from the opening tap. We did. It's always good for Melvin Buckley. He makes his first shot or two. It's good for him. And it's uh, just for, for any team, you got off to a great start. You uh, just kind of feed off that, and it, it uh, enables you to get more aggressive defensively as well. You jumped right out to a 14-4 lead. Then it was 25-9. to Then control Gransbury got in the action 27 to 11 he had himself a nice ball game well he did and he had himself a good ball game without overtaxing him physically that was our goal for him. our team was to keep our minutes down just a wonderful effort for him as you mentioned in limited minutes there's an alley-oop to McHugh Mattis Jesus Verdejo with the pass and that's the one thing that's kind of underrated about your wings with Buckley and Verdejo they can pass the basketball like this a nice lead to Eddie Lovett well, I think more than anything, just their willingness to give the ball up, to share it, to, uh, you have 25 uh, field goals and you, you assist on 22 of them. That's, that's really, really impressive. They get any better than that. We had a big halftime lead and things did not let up in the second half. And there's another assist from Kentrell Gransbury getting Solomon Bozeman involved. And I know you like to go inside out with that offense. That's what we call a textbook. You can't throw it up any better. Harris Williams getting in there and some playing time. Everybody played in this contest. Nearly everyone scored as well. Amusaka with a pass inside to Kentrell Gransbury there, and the lead continued to get bigger. And the way you shared the basketball, the unselfish play in this one, I thought was big. It really was. And that was one of the things we were most pleased with. Anytime you have a chance to play all of your players, they're happy. They're happy for each other. And it's good to see your starters cheering for those guys who are seldom, uh, seldom used. And again, just sharing the basketball is so important. And it also, I think, uh, says something about uh, what Contreras Gransbury has given us because people have begun to post drop, double team him. And what that would do, it will open up better looks for our perimeter players. 82 49, the final score there. Solomon Bozeman, the freshman, had a career high 24 points. Well, certainly stepping up in weight class. Some call it the best conference in the history of college basketball. We're, of course, talking about the Big East. 16 teams strong and the Bulls come right out of the gate with a top 25 team on the road, the Yukon Huskies. We'll take a look at that bunch when we come back. You're watching the Robert McCullum Show. Hit the road and run with the USF Bulls to the Louisville basketball game. Enter to win at any Canes Furniture location and you could win a trip for two to the USF Bulls road game at Louisville. Airfare for two. Hotel and transportation are included. Plus, you get a free Chick-fil-A sandwich coupon just for entering at Canes. The Bulls are back on court, so don't miss a single dribble, drive, dunk, or dish. Visit any Canes Furniture store today and enter free to win. Best quality, best prices, Canes. When it's time to cool off the competition, the USF Bulls rely on CGM Services air conditioning and heating. Call CGM Services today and ask about the Carrier Infinity System, the world's best air conditioning system. The Infinity System takes indoor comfort to a new performance level. So when you want quality service and long-lasting carrier products, be cool like a bull and turn to the experts. Call Mike Charles or another CGM teammate at 813-AIR-COOL. CGM Services, proud sponsor of USF Athletics. Stunning video, MP3 sound, broadband speed, internet, and email. All working flawlessly together in one ultra-thin device. The new Blackjack. Only from Singular.
Welcome back. I'm Jim Lighthall along with the coach Robert McCullum and we've already covered the Bulls win over Bethune-Cookman in the non-conference finale on Sunday. So it's time to jump into the Big East pool and USF drew the 14th ranked 11 and 1 Yukon Huskies in their building in Hartford, Connecticut. That of course was the league opener. And coach in this one uh, you got down 2 nothing but immediately you come right back and score and really in the opening 4 or 5 minutes it was back and forth. Where it really was and in, in spite of the fact that we committed several turnovers there uh, all the way up to about the 10-11 uh, minute mark, it was just a uh, you know, two or three point game. We felt really good, all things considered. Solomon Bozeman again taking the ball into the paint and he got fouled and went to the free throw line. And I really thought your ability to drive the ball into the lane and draw their big men forward was a big key in the first few minutes. Well, that was something we intended to do. Our game plan was to try and make to beat their 7-3 uh, center go out and defend ball screens away from the basket, which would in itself open up the middle for drives. Perfect inbounds play there. Melvin Buckley knocking down the three. You're down nine at this point, about six minutes to go in the opening half, and there's Buckley again. Well, he really shot the ball well up there. Well, he did. He shot it well early. That's what we need him to do is get us, help get us off to a good start. And McHugh Mattis right there with a huge block. And he sent a message in this game, I thought, to the rest of the Big East that he is one of the best shot blockers, not only in the Big East, but obviously in the country. Well, he really did. It's also great uh, to see him get out and run the floor, and uh, especially against a team uh, like UConn, who uh, has been one of the best transition teams in the country year in and year out. That with another block right there from Hugh Madison. His ability to change ends of the floor makes him a tough matchup for a lot of power forwards in the Boy, league. Boy, it really does. And uh, one of the things we tried to benefit from is kind of uh, making he and Melvin Buckley uh, interchangeable. One point of the game, one's a small forward, the other one's a power forward, or vice versa. So we just try and push the right buttons at the right time to get the most out of them uh, uh, offensively. Your team comes up short, 69-50 to 50 in this one. Buckley was the leading scorer with 17 points. Mattis had six rebounds. He also had five blocks in the contest, but you dropped your Big East opener. But I thought that you guys played tough in the second half, Coach, in a game that maybe could have gotten away from you in the last 20 minutes. Well, uh, it, it, it did get away from us in the first five minutes of the second half. I, I can't overemphasize how important the first five minutes of the game, the last four or five minutes of the first half, and the first five minutes of the second half. For all practical purposes, both teams are fighting for momentum that could very well carry them uh, throughout the rest of the game. And unfortunately for us, uh, UConn won that all-important first five minutes uh, of the second half. Solomon Bozeman had baptism by fire in his freshman Big East Conference opener. But as the son of a coach and a former All-State performer from the state of Arkansas, he isn't intimidated at all by the experience. We'll get to know him a little bit better when we come back after this timeout. Hello? It's for you. Tampa Bay's favorite newspaper makes it easier to be in the know. More colorful, streamlined pages get you quickly to your favorite news and features. And new Sunday sections about the box, the workplace, and travel, books, and the arts. It's everything you'd expect from one of America's 10 best newspapers. Designed with you in mind. In the know, in the time. To subscribe, log on to TampaBay.com or call 1-877-THE-TIMES. Dodge Caliber's versatility and great gas mileage make it perfect for a road trip. All the right features make it even better.
Welcome back to the Robert McCullum Show. And you know, it's not too often that the keys to a Division I college basketball team get turned over to a true freshman, but that is the case for Solomon Bozeman. He's making the transition from being a big-time scorer at the high school level to running the point and making sure everybody stays involved. So let's take a closer look at the pride of Magnolia, Arkansas. He's wiser beyond his years. This week's Players Profile is brought to you by the St. Petersburg Times. Freshman point guard Solomon Bozeman has helped the Bulls surpass their win total from a year ago after a victory over Wake Forest. He enjoys the challenge of being the team's general on the court. When I was coming in, coach would tell me I always think things are too easy. And I've been learning these last couple of games that, that things are not easy playing the point and being a general. So I'm just trying to get better at that. And coach has been helping me with that against Wake Forest. ESPN 2, I mean, Big East first ACC, I mean, that's what you dream of when you're a little kid. And I'm just so proud to be able to play in the Big East and play against good teams like that. Solomon is one of five Bulls averaging double-digit points this season. He also leads the team in free throw percent, a stat he is very proud of. And just being able to hit free throws, I mean, just helps you win ball games. And I mean, I love free throw shooting and I love winning ball games. Solomon grew up around the game of basketball. His father is the head coach at Southern Arkansas, and he knew USF was the place for him after meeting with the players and staff on his recruiting visit. Coach McCullum came, I mean, my state championship game, and came down here on the visit and got to know the guys, got to know Buck real well and some of the other guys. And, I mean, just knowing those guys and getting comfortable with them and getting comfortable with the coaching staff made me want to come here. Well, Coach, the thing about Bozeman that I love is he's got a little bit of a swagger to his game, but at six foot one sixty-five, he is not afraid to go into the paint. Well, he's not, and he brings uh, some intangibles to the game that you just absolutely have to have to have a, run a successful program, be competitive in a league like the Big East. One, he's extremely confident, and uh, two, he's extremely competitive. Now, sometimes those things uh, <laughs> get him in trouble. Uh, but yet I much prefer having a player that possesses those qualities than not. And uh, it's those, those intangibles that really enable him to be successful and compete at this level in spite of his small size. Tremendous basketball knowledge for the freshman Solomon Bozeman. Hey, you're going to want to stick around for this week's edition of the Coach's Corner. The Sun Dome is up for renovations, and we'll take a sneak peek when we come back. These babies were born less than a year ago. Already more than $500 million have been raised for their education. And when they start school, it will be over $5 billion. What makes them so special? They live in Florida, where profits from the Florida Lottery have helped fund education with over $16 billion since 1988. Aren't they lucky? When you play, we all win. When it's time to cool off for competition, the USF Bulls rely on CGM Services air conditioning and heating. Call CGM Services today and ask about the Carrier Infinity System, the world's best air conditioning system. The Infinity System takes indoor comfort to a new performance level. So when you want quality service and long lasting carrier products be cool like a bull and turn to the experts. Call Mike Charles or another CGM teammate at 813 Air Cool, CGM Services, proud sponsor of USF Athletics. Hey, we've got a fun coach's corner this week. As USF continues to update all of their athletic facilities, the Sun Dome, the home of the Bulls, is, of course, on that list. Athletic Director Doug Woolard fills us in the uh, coach's corner this week, takes us on a tour of what's currently on the board. Here's this week's coach's corner. We're excited about our facilities initiative here. You know, we... Uh... We've got a great opportunity uh, as we've joined the Big East Conference um, recently and have 
uh, entering now our second year. We're the only Division I university and three and a half million people in the Tampa Bay area. And we have a chance for, to give our athletes an opportunity to compete at the very highest level nationally. And uh, there's a lot of components in that and a lot of components for them to have a chance to be successful. One of them is facilities. And so it really starts with this piece uh, as far as our, our, the facility upgrades and the facilities that we, that we need to provide our student athletes for them to have an opportunity to have a level playing field. So after this facility, we need to start honing in, if you would, start looking at the facilities that we have uh, for our teams to compete in. And so uh, we need to start possibly with the Sun Dome as, as maybe not the piece that we actually start with. But as we're discussing it, you know, the Sun Dome certainly needs renovation. We're at the northeast entrance of the Sun Dome, right here on USF's campus actually houses our uh, women's volleyball team, women's basketball, and men's basketball. And it's a facility that uh, we look forward to, to renovating and to changing the experience for both our student athletes and our fans. We're going to change the seating configuration in the lower bowl to make it a real uh, bowl experience, one that will really be, uh, I think, an ad advantageous uh, to our players and to our fans. And on the second level, we'll wind up changing the seating configuration and adding some suites that, uh, for both corporate and, and also attached to the uh, Sun Dome. Our plan is to have a basketball center for women's basketball and men's basketball that will include new office space, new locker rooms, practice facilities, and then as well as a dining hall attached to the Sun Dome for all of our student athletes for nutritional use and also will be able to facilitate use in the Sun Dome. We're in a baseball facility that is going on 40 years old. And actually, it was the site of the first baseball program here at USF and, and continues to be today. And our plan is to certainly make it more fan-friendly and to make it an environment that we can recruit the very best baseball players in the country. participate here in our baseball program and uh, including amenities such as uh, session areas, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then as you pan around and you look uh, over the left field, uh, uh, the left field fence, uh, that's where our new women's softball facility will be located. Again, uh, a facility that will be, uh, provide, again, our, our women's players an opportunity to participate in one of the best facilities in the country. And then if you look out toward uh, right center field, our new uh, tennis complex will be for women's tennis and for men's tennis. Again, kind of completing, if you would, our master plan here in our athletic program. Presently located right outside of the northeast part of our athletic training And this is where we'll... Uh, This is where we'll locate uh, some of our athletic facilities. For example, our soccer playing facility and soccer practice facility will be on an upper shelf right outside of our athletic training facility. Presently, there is some soccer uh, community facility taking place there at, at this time. And uh, as we pan around then and look down at the lower shelf, this is where the Frank Morsani football practice complex will be and we'll have three full-size uh, state-of-the-art practice football fields which will be located right outside football locker rooms. As we keep panning around, uh, again you're going to see uh, a practice area that uh, we're going to turn into uh, a track as well as as you see the, the present track facility. Uh, that, again, is uh, being done in a, a partnership with, uh, with Hillsborough County, and uh, that will be both uh, competition tracks, and one will certainly be utilized and shared with, uh, with the community and the Hillsborough School District. We've been in a, a process of developing and fundraising at the same time, and, and really it's going to be a collaborative effort. 
It's going to be institutional support. It'll be private public partnerships. Uh, it'll be through corporate sponsorships and corporate advertising, uh, as well as philanthropy. And, uh, you know, it's going to take a lot of effort uh, from all of those uh, different components to bring this program to success. But I'm, uh, I'm convinced it's going to happen. As I said, we've already started the track. We got a very uh, generous gift from Frank and Carol Morsani for $3 million to help with our project. And um, I would tell you that, uh, that Leroy Selman with the uh, Partnership Foundation for Athletics under Vicki Mitchell's crew, that uh, they're in full swing of, uh, of working on the, the funding piece for, for this project. Well, facilities is a pretty strong word for coaches and athletic directors, but Coach how is it to those kids that might be sitting on the fence trying to decide what school they want to go to? Extremely. And uh, there's a few ways to look at it. One, the tradition-rich uh, programs, uh, for the most part, have outstanding facilities. Or if anyone can get away with uh, those facilities not being updated timely, it's those tradition-rich programs. But for but they have them. And so in order for us to, to level the playing field from a recruiting standpoint, uh, we have to upgrade our facilities. And that's the one thing that can help. That's, history has proven those up-and-coming programs, those new if you will, to the upper echelon of college athletics. The uh, best way to, and quickest way to do it is having outstanding facilities. I think uh, Jim let speak to that as quickly as well as anyone during his tenure at Kansas State. Kansas State was barely on the map. No one, no one wanted to go there in terms of your big-time prospects. And before they won, they uh, updated, upgraded their facilities to have some of the finest football facilities in the country, which made it a lot easier for them to attract the best prospects in the country. And so that's just an example of how Facilities can quickly level that plan field, and so we are so appreciative administration for that commitment, realizing uh, what has to be done here with the willingness to make it happen. Coach, the league office didn't do you any favors this year. USF, one of the few Big East teams to play their first two league games on the road, and face another top ten team on Sunday in Pittsburgh. We'll have a complete preview of the Pittsburgh Panthers after a quick break. Now, Tampa Bay's favorite newspaper makes it easier to know. More colorful, streamlined pages get you quickly to your favorite news and features. And new Sunday sections about the box, the workplace, and travel, books, and the arts. It's everything you'd expect from one of America's ten best newspapers. Designed with you in mind. To subscribe, log on to TampaBay.com or call 1-877-THE-TIMES. versatility and great gas mileage make it perfect for a trip. all the right features make it even better Hello? It's for you. Robert McCollum Show has been presented by Canes and Save on Furniture and brought to you in part by CGM.
services. Singular Wireless, Coca-Cola, Dodge, Kirby's Menswear, Likes Insurance, and by the St. Petersburg Top. As we take a look at those big East standings, things don't get any easier for you, Coach. You're going to stay on the road to face yet big East team that's gotten off to a fast start. We're talking about the Pitt Panthers. A couple of losses have been against ranked teams. Time now for the Dodge Scouting Report. The Scouting Report is brought to you by Dodge. Well, Coach, you're talking about one of the premier players in the country and their big Aaron Gray, he's going to be tough to stop. Well, he really is. He's big, talented, he's poised, he's averaging 11 rebounds a game, does a great job of making decisions, rally turns it over, averaging around 15, 16 a game. We certainly have our hands full with their patience, outstanding uh, defensively on the half court, and do a great job taking care of the basketball. USF has never lost to the pit in a couple of meetings, so we're going to try to keep that rolling this and Coach, best of luck on that one in Pittsburgh. Thank you. We'll have a complete recap of that game and more the next time we get together right here on the Robert McCollum Show.